Hey, everybody, welcome back to the show. Really excited to have my friend Jen Falloon on today. She's a member of our cash flow group, which is our multifamily group inside of Investor Fuel, but uh, started as a single family investor. And we're going to be talking about having the right money mindset. A lot of people in America are broke, as you know, and uh, a lot of it is just a mindset. Are you stuck there? How do you get out? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Professional real estate investors know that it's not really about the real estate. In fact, real estate is just a vehicle to freedom. A group of over 100 of the nation's leading real estate investors from across the country meet several times a year at the Investor Fuel Real Estate Mastermind to share ideas on how to strengthen each other's businesses, but also to come together as friends and build more fulfilling lives for all of those around us. On today's show, we're going to continue our conversation of fueling our businesses and fueling our lives. I'm glad you're here. Hey, Jane, awesome. welcome to the show. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah, you so much. Let's jump in. So tell us a little bit about your background. And I know you, we're going to talk about kind of the mindset of, uh, mm -hmm. of this today. And I, I know just from our conversation that you once had uh, some limiting beliefs on what was possible, right? I think we probably all did. And I, a lot of folks that are watching today are going to probably identify with this, but tell us a little bit about your background and how you got to where you are today. Yeah. So um, why I love real estate so much is because you can do it. Anybody can do it, like truly anybody. And um, when I first learned about wholesaling, so of course I started in single family, as most of us do. And um, when I learned about wholesaling, so I didn't grow up wealthy, right? I had very poor parents, very tumultuous, you know, from, you know, really birth to like 32 years old, like just a mess, right? Just an absolute hot mess. And nobody in my family was wealthy. Nobody knew about wealth building. And so, you know, I married an executive and, uh, you know, and he was very much into real estate investing wanting to do it. When we moved to San Antonio, it was such a hot market that we, you know, we started our single family business and my son is um, with us in that. And when I learned to wholesale, so for six years, I was a single mom and I would beg and borrow and steal. And I didn't get child support. My family would help me, but you know, they can only do so much, right? Again, I didn't come from a lot of wealth and, and they did what they could, but, you know, and then I'd have a side hustle and you know, if I had a hundred extra dollars in the bank, like something would happen and there would go that money. It's like, I could just never get ahead. And so then when I learned about wholesaling, like I grieved, like the single mom of, you know, back then I just grieved for her. Cause I thought if I had only known about wholesaling back then, it, it had been life-changing for me, you know, to do one deal a month. Um, you know, door knocking and driving for dollars and doing all the things you can do for free um, and did one deal a month at $10,000, I'd have been, yeah. I'd have been set. I would not have had the problems and the worries that I did have. And so um, it really kind of became my passion to teach um, college students and single moms and people that are just broke and tired of being broke and they don't know how to be unbroke. Yeah. Um, you know, wholesaling is a very easy, very effective, very fast way to, to get money in. Yeah. And then, for, for a lot of folks, they just don't, it, it is a mindset thing. Like you don't think it's possible. So you just keep doing enough to kind of get by. And, mm -hmm. and my guess is for you and I, lots of folks in my family or people that I've known are the same way. It's not like they're not working hard. Like they're still working like super hard. Right. But they just can't get out of this, just getting by type thing. And a lot of it, is what's between your ears, right? It's just what's possible. Right. And I would like to think that, um, you know, there's a lot of wholesalers. There's a lot of real estate investors. Um, I didn't really have Google. Like, I don't even know if Google was a thing in like the, you know, early 2000s and mid 2000s. It was more like, I remember my first uh, search engine was like askjeeves.com. And then it went to just ask.com. And um, you know, looking back, I'm like, I, I wonder why I never Googled like side hustles. And if I did, would wholesaling have come up? And I hope that there's enough of us now in, in today's day and age that if you did Google like a side hustle or how to make money, wholesaling would be one of those things that, that come up. 
Yeah. Um, so there, real estate investors, make sure your SEOs are, are popping. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, but then on the other side, you know, again, so I've changed my mindset. We're now doing single family. We're doing quite well. And my friend invited me to, you know, a multifamily event. And I was like, oh, I can't buy apartments. I'm not accredited. I don't have that kind of money. Like I can't, I can't do apartments. And again, you know, we limit ourselves like right out the gate, instead of being open-minded and saying, you know, I'll come and learn. I was like, no, nope, can't do it. And she was like, but you're going to do it. And I'm glad she did. I'm glad she pushed me because I went and it was like, I can own apartments with none of my own money. None of it. If I choose not to, right. um, you know, I can bring the money in and be a part of the deal. I can underwrite a deal and be part of the deal. And so that is, again, so powerful. And now you've like really upped your game because now you've gone from single family houses. And, you know, if you're just wholesaling, you're just flipping contracts to actually owning hundreds and hundreds of doors of apartment complexes. Yeah. And and the wealth, like it really starts to, you know, skyrocket at that point. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So let's talk about why, why, why do you think people get stuck? I know one of the reasons is, is who you're surrounded with, right? If you're around the same family members or friends that, that never knew that, and you're asking them for advice, they don't have the ability to give you the advice, but talk about that a little bit. Yeah, for sure. So in my instance, for sure, but in most of our, you know, most of our lives, um, we had middle-class parents, um, lower middle class, middle class, even upper middle class, their parents were probably middle class somewhere. And so throughout these, um, you know, generations, we are passing down middle class mindsets, things like don't keep all your eggs in one basket. Well, that's stupid. Why don't you keep all your eggs in like a real estate basket and continue to make money? Like, don't be so diversified that something is losing money. Right. And depend on the ones that are making money to, you know, cover those. Everything right. should be making money, you know. And the one of the things that cracks me up the most, you know, well, there's so much like go to college. You know, it's so important to go to college. Well, that's not going to help you. And you're just putting yourself again further in debt unless you're super smart and, you know, can get scholarships. But most of us weren't or aren't. So we're putting ourselves further in debt you know, work 40 hours, you know, stay with the same employer. And, you know, you work really hard to make somebody else rich. And in 40 years, you can get a watch, you know, and it's like, (laughs) no, I don't want to watch. I want to, I want super fancy watches that I paid for myself with my assets, right? I want all my assets to pay for my liabilities. Um, And then when you're upper middle class, you know, you've made it when you have a financial advisor. So you want somebody that makes a hundred thousand dollars a year to tell you how to, you know, retire as a millionaire. And then you're going to pay him commission, you know, to tell you these things. If he knew how to be a millionaire, he'd be a millionaire. Right. right? And then somebody's like, oh, I have a hundred thousand dollars with my financial advisor. No, you don't. You have eighty thousand dollars with your financial advisor because he took 20 of it. And then everything that you make, he gets a portion of. So whatever you think you're making, you know, you cannot pay commission and build wealth one or the other. So, you know, but these are things that we think we're supposed to do because that's what we were taught and God love our parents. They don't, they didn't know any better because that's what they were taught. Right. Um, But at some point, somebody has to say, stop, we're doing things differently. Right. We're not, you know, and, and thank you, Lord, that I was the one to be blessed to do that. Like I, my kids are entrepreneurs, um, and you know, neither one of them went to college. Cameron did some college and I asked him to quit to, to run our business. Um, but he won't go back to college unless it's something that he wants to, and right. they do quite well. And, you know, you don't have to have a financial advisor. That's silly. Have a wealth manager instead, somebody that, you know, and, and don't take advice from friends and family that aren't where you want to be. Right. So if you want to be a millionaire, you can't ask Aunt Linda, who makes, you know, fifty thousand dollars, you know, at the bank as a teller, how to be a millionaire. You need to go find millionaires, have them mentor you, ask them the questions. How did you get where you are? They all have a story and they should all have a process of how they did it. And then you just Corey Peterson has a book, Copy Your Way to Success. Get the book, read it, 
and copy your way to success. Do exactly what they did and you'll be on that same path. Yeah. And I think, you know, now, obviously you're an investor fuel too, is, is just getting yourself in proximity of people that are doing things that are bigger than you and continue mm-hmm. finding ways to get in bigger and bigger rooms or around bigger and bigger people, not bigger people, but people that have that mindset of like, you know, all, next thing, you know, you're, you're worth 50 million, but you're like, you know, guys that are billionaires, right? It's like, how do I continue to level up, level up? And there, there's a game to it. Right. But it's all about getting mm-hmm. around the right people. Right. Yeah. And you have to start somewhere. Right. So maybe start with like a local area um, and then, you know, just work your way up. And yeah, I investor fuel has been amazing because it's like such a big room and it's a very qualified um, active people. There, there are no losers in that room. There are no like not doers in that room. And I love it because whatever you need, they're also givers. Everybody in investor fuel is truly a giver. And if you're stuck, I mean, after a phone call or two, you're unstuck. And just by being in proximity, like you can't help but level up, right? Yeah. Because, you know, you can't be in a room of 50, 100, 150 people and not just by velocity, just get, you know, pulled up. Especially and, rooms you uh, paid to fun. be in, right? I mean, when you, when you pay to be in a room and you, that, that basically is, is like, it almost puts a badge on that I invest in myself, right? And then when you get around other people that are willing to invest in themselves, willing to do what it takes is like, everything is just a whole nother level versus, you know, said, you said RIA clubs, I've been a part of a lot of RIA clubs and stuff like that. So not to poo poo on them, but there's a lot of people that go there and it didn't cost them anything to get there. And, and it's just free information. And when, you know, there's this saying that if you don't pay, you don't pay attention on some level, not if that's where you're at and you need to break through, that's fine. Uh, but take it seriously, right? There's so many people that don't take it seriously because they didn't pay anything. It didn't, it didn't cost, they didn't have to pay to travel. They didn't have to like take time out of their day to go do something. They just showed up somewhere that there were some warm bodies, you know, and what ends up happening is you're around a lot of people that have a different mentality. They're more of a broke mindset of like, it didn't cost me anything to be here. And therefore they don't really put a lot of effort into giving back or sharing or learning. Right. Then they don't want to grow. Right. right? These really the, the things that I talk about are for people that truly want more, like as a single mom and even early in my marriage and, you know, um, Eric is amazing. And he made, you know, he was, he was definitely out of my league. Um, and again, I had to change the mindset to even date people like him. Right. I know I wanted more. I've always known I wanted more. I just didn't know how, but if you truly want more and you truly want to change, you have to start with the Rhea if you're dead broke but you're going to level up and you want to level up, right? For these are for people that are really, you know, they're hustlers and they're, and they're going to do it and they're going to level up. This yeah. is the actual items and how you do it. Yeah, um, and awesome. if, the, you know, if they're not going to take it seriously, then, you know, again, you're always going to be broke. So it's your own fault. If you're broke, it is your own fault and you're probably lazy and or stupid. So don't be lazy <laughs> or stupid. And don't be broke. There's you no have to want it bad it. enough, right? You can't make the excuses that that I don't have what I want, and so and then go mm-hmm. home and watch TV for three hours. It's like okay, well, no, for real. How bad do you really want it, right? And so mm-hmm. let's talk about right. that a little and bit. You, you, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. I was gonna say, do do you believe because you you started in single family as did I, and moved up to multifamily as as have I over the past few years as well. I still have a bunch of single family rentals and still do deals here and there, right? But most of my focus is on multifamily because the deals are much bigger. And it moves, it, it, it took, my, my mindset is higher now. Like, why would, why would I want to do a $200,000 deal when I can do a $50 million deal, right? <laughs> right, yeah. But do you think it takes, I know it doesn't, but do you, do you believe that that's a good starting ground in single family? No, that's where folks are? I think, I think see, nobody should be in single family ever. Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> everybody, so really, it's so funny because everybody and everybody, right? Like not truly everybody, most 99.9% of the people start in single family and then they learn about multifamily and you think like that's the next step. Like multifamily is like college. Multifamily is like kindergarten and the single family is like college because it's so much work and and it's a lot of work. Like in single family, you have to constantly hustle. Once you make that flip or sell that contract, you got to do it again, right? Constant right. hustle, 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 hustle. Where multifamily, you hustle really hard for like 60 days and then you're done if you want. You know, if your acquisition fee was big enough, you can be one deal a year is all you have to do. Uh, we try to do three. 
Um, but you know, it's like, uh, what would it be like three, six, nine months of hustle. And then, then we're off, you know, we're taking the holidays off and, uh, yeah, it's just so much easier. I think the clientele is a lot better. So when you're dealing with single family people, again, you're, you're dealing with people that have, you know, they're in, they're in financial distress, right. They're angry and they're sad and it's so much work and it's emotionally draining. You don't have that with multifamily. Like if, uh, somebody that owns an apartment complex has pretty much the same mindset you do. And they understand where you're coming from. They understand, you know, that they want to exit, um, you know, and so it's just the, the transition is so much easier. The acquisition yeah. is so much easier. It's like B2B versus B2C, right? You're dealing with other mm-hmm. business owners. And so let's talk about one of the great things about multifamily is just the team-based approach. Like you need a team of people doing mm-hmm. different things. And I think um, back to the mindset stuff, it's most people's assumption that if I go buy a, a 10 or 30 or $50 million apartment that I need to have a lot of money, but you could, right? I mean, obviously it takes money to get these deals done. It doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. need to be your money. You can help raise money or you could just source deals. If you're really good at analyzing deals, you could just find deals, right? So talk about the team-based approach and how folks, if they wanted to go right into multifamily, how they might do that without yeah, a lot of money, let's say. Absolutely. So, I mean, that's pretty much what you said. So yeah. the most important to me is raising money because that that's a relationship-based um, technique, right? And sometimes it takes a little bit, right? Yeah. So, you know, somebody's you know, when, wants to go out and they want to network and they want to party and they want to bring in people, raise the money, bring the money and you can come into a deal. Um, we are SEC regulated. So you do have to have like a job um, with that as, as part of the GP, but it can be a super simple job that doesn't take a lot of time. So if somebody's sure. working a corporate job and they're like, I just, I can't take on another job. The job can be so simple. Like you can do it from your computer, takes you, you know, an hour to a month. You can do it on a Saturday um, you know, very, very easy. And then, yeah, yeah so that, those are more for the right brain people that want to be out and the extroverts and, you know, like, I really want to be in a deal, but I hate numbers. So that's me, right. Then go raise the money, um, go make broker relations and have them email you the deal. And then you email the deal, you know, or bring on a team, um, of a left brainer. Uh, my husband's a nerd and I love him for that because he loves Excel spreadsheets and he loves to crunch the numbers and I love him dearly for that. So, you know, when I get the deals, I give them to him and he puts them in the calculator and do they work? Um, and then uh, you align yourself with people who would be good bus drivers, um, who would, you know, be good at managing the managers and talking to attorneys and talking to lenders and, you know, talking to the people that you have to bring in to make the deal done. Um, And uh, yeah, so it does, it is a team. It is a team effort and it's very important to pick your team members wisely. And, uh, but it's a lot of fun. And once you get that team and everybody in their lanes up and running, it's such a smooth process and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And what I've seen, because we've done quite a few deals over the past, you know, three years or so is that, Obviously, you know, I even own an agency on the single family side, like paid lead generation is a, is a critical part of the single family side, but on the multifamily side, it's relationships, right? So you don't necessarily mm-hmm. have to have a lot of money to advertise. You just need to have time to reach out to people, be good at building relationships and then analyzing deals. So if you don't have money, you know, finding deals is, is still highly valued, right? Building oh, those yeah. relationships is highly valued using some of those relationships to raise money. Those are all things you could do without necessarily if you have more time than money, right? It's, that's that's one way right. to do it for sure. Underwriting. Like there are so yeah. many people that we've had come to us and be like, how do I get in? I'm like, raise money or underwrite. Oh, I want to underwrite. And I'm like, thank God. Because, you know, a lot of times <laughs> yeah. we have more deals than we can even have time to underwrite. Yeah. And then you send them a deal and they're like, nope, we're out. I'm like, ah, oh. you know, it, it's tedious. It's tedious right. work. But if a deal works... And you're going to get, you know, 30, 50, hundred thousand dollar acquisition fee. Aren't you glad you took, you know, two hours of your time to analyze? Yep. And, and yep. again, that's what people don't get, right? They want, they want that acquisition fee without having done any work whatsoever. Right. This is work, you know, yeah. and um, it's just, you get to take more time off and you get to make your own hours and um, it's more fulfilling work, but it is work. Like we don't yeah. just walk in and, 
you know, get handed this stuff. We yeah. work for it. A lot of times it looks easy on social media, right? Like, oh, we just closed this deal. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, there's a, a lot of people want to, I say this all the time, they want to pop a pill, and lose 50 pounds and replace their hair with something out of a can or like whatever. Like everybody wants this easy bullet button infomercial life, but that's just not the reality, right? You have to be willing to bet on yourself and, and work <laughs> hard to kind of break that money mindset curse. You have to be willing to do the work, right? Yeah. Yeah. And which is why people, there's a lot of people that have jobs. They go in, they do the same thing every day. You know, they're not forced to grow. They're not forced to think for themselves. And, uh, you know, and, and that's fine. We need employees, but again, you can't complain about being broke and, you know, not, not do the next step, not grow. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we talked a little bit about you know, another important part is surrounding yourself with the right people. And obviously you're part of the investor fuel mastermind. And you said a few things previously, would you mind just giving a little testimonial on what it's like to be a part of the investor fuel mastermind? Yeah. So, I mean, it's where you go to level up and, uh, yeah. And you're surrounded by kind of touched on it, but truly winners, like people who are actually doing what they say they're doing. And, and to me, they really underestimate themselves. Like whatever they say they're doing or the money they make, I always feel like it's like very humbled down that they're actually doing way more than they even give themselves credit for, or, you know, and making way more money. And, uh, but the community is amazing because it's just a community of helpers. Um, and what I love most about it, cause I have been in other masterminds and other events where it was like, just chest beating, like, look how cool I am. And this cracks me up when they're like, I just want to thank God for how awesome I am and all this money that I'm making. And, you know, I'm just like, I just want to barf on you. Right. We don't have that in investor fuel. Everybody is truly humble. Everybody is down to earth. Everybody's there's regular people. I love that there's no gurus. Well, I mean, you let John Jackson in, but other than that, like there's just no gurus. And it's just everyday people who just want to do deals and do them together. And, uh, and I love that. I love the camaraderie. I love the family feel of it. Um, I love that it's not pretentious. And um, yeah, I mean, but we're still moving our needles. So it's like all these, you know, even though everything's laid back and we have a good time and man, we have a good time but there's a lot of business to be done. Right. And there's a lot of learning. And um, yeah, so every, every so often I'll kind of say, you know what, I just don't know that I really want to be in a mastermind. It is time consuming, right. It does take several days, a quarter. Um, We do travel or I, you know, I have to, you don't have a couple in Dallas, but you know, I'm required to travel. And I just think, you know, maybe, maybe I'll just drop out. Like I'm probably peaked. You know, I know what I need to be doing. And then I go and it's like, my mind is blown. It was like amazing. I'm like, how would I ever think about like, why would I think that I was going to leave? This is crazy. I can't leave. Um, And because, and then the content just continues to get better. And so I really like that, that as you bring in new speakers and as you get feedback, like it just gets better and better. It's not stagnant. It's not the same thing every quarter. And you're like, oh, we have to do this again. I'm actually really excited. I'm excited about the speakers and, and um, you know, and the things we learn and, you know, the new people. We're, you know, we're constantly getting new people in. And I wasn't a fan of that at first. Uh, I didn't want to be an event, right? I wanted it to be a mastermind. I wanted it to be small. And as new people come in, I'm like, oh, okay, this is it. I don't want any more people. And then new other new people come in. I'm like, oh, though, but they are really awesome. And uh, but the wealth that's coming in, the wealth, the knowledge wealth, is just like you know, after the meeting, and we've had these new people. I'm like, how could how did we even ever get by without them? And so yeah, it's oh, it's awesome. It's really good. It's very valuable, um, and I appreciate you having it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. I, I was going to let you run for as long as you want to do there. You're off, I know, uh, right? Like, yeah. So thank you. I, no, I'm, but if so. anybody's listening to this, that they're on that fence, like just do it. It's so worth it. Yeah. It's a great group. It's a great group of people really doing life together. I, I don't think you've been to any of our, uh, any of our, of our kind of adventure trips, like going to, no, going to Cabo. Cause you go to like Mexico that. 
yeah. in places where it snows. Yeah. I'm like, no. <laughs> but anyway, we do. A lot of us are doing life together. A lot of us are lifelong friends, and there's amazing friendships that have been created there. And so glad, glad you're a part of it. So Jen, if, if folks want to connect with you in any way, whether they want to talk about multifamily deals or anything else you have going on, where, where, where should they go to connect? Um, you can always jump on my calendar on my website, borsainvestments.com. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, Jennifer Falloon. Um, my IG account is Borsa Investments, LLC. I have a Borsa Investments Facebook page. I'm on Facebook, Jennifer Falloon. So, you know, all the, I'm sure if you just put in Jennifer Falloon, there's not many of us. So you'll find me. Awesome. Awesome. We'll add some links down below the show notes. So, Hey, thanks again for joining us today. Really good stuff. And I, and I, I, I agree with you hundred percent. Mindset is such an important part of moving forward. And, and honestly, I think for a lot of us, we look back as to how much we've grown. But, and now what's different is if you didn't really have that mindset of trying to get to the next level and you're just kind of getting by right now, you've come so far, but you also realize how far there is to go, right? Like mm -hmm. now you understand the possibilities that there's levels to this game, right? And, you, and, you're, and you're never really content with where you're at, not in an unhappy way. It's just like, wow, I have so many more people I can impact, so much more maybe money I can make or the impact that would have if I could get those things. And it really opens up this kind of universe of potential, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that there's, um, I don't know, an obligation or to me anyway, maybe not to everybody, but there's an obligation to me that as I grow to look back and give a hand up you yeah. know, for the people that are down. And I, I just think that's so important and, and something that's really, um, really important to my heart, especially being a single mom and, you know, trying to educate, you know, college girls and, and single moms and just broke people. Like you don't have to stay there, right? right. Like it sucks and it's a season, but come up here. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Good stuff. Thanks. For, thanks again for sharing. Thank you. And everybody, I uh, hope you got some value from the show today. If you haven't yet uh, talked to us about Investor Fuel, you can go to InvestorFuel.com to learn more. You can learn more about our, our single family groups. Uh, we have groups for single family investors based on the level of experience and also our cash flow group, which is our group for uh, multifamily investors. See which one's a fit for you. Schedule a call with us. And we'd love to talk about it and see if you might be a fit. We have our next events coming up right around the corner. So we'd love to talk to you soon. Until next time, have a great day. We'll see you. Bye. Are you an active real estate investor? If so, and you want to latch on to the power of surrounding yourself with over a hundred of the nation's leading real estate investors, all committed to building stronger businesses and living richer, fuller lives, you should jump on a call with us to learn more about Investor Fuel. Simply visit investorfuel.com to get started.